Welcome to another edition of Guys Talking About Sports. This week's episode, we're going to be talking about the NHL, the NBA, NASCAR, football, baseball, and everything else. Same things we talk about every week. So, Cameron, hello. Do you catch the. Hello. Hello. Did you catch that uh, Mike Trout got a 12-year, $430 million contract? Yes, I caught it. Caught it like a trout. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I did catch that. And $430 million. Everybody was losing their stuff over. They were like, oh, Harper. Harper got this huge contract, 13-year, 330 And then Mike Trout's just like, Tom. hold my beer. <laughs> I'm going to take one less year, and I'm going to get paid $100 million more. <laughs> And, and that just, it's crazy <laughs> that Mike Trout sitting there, he's played in one playoff series his whole career, yeah. and he's the best player in baseball. He's making mm-hmm. huge money, but are you kidding me? You don't want to go to a team like the Yankees or the Red Sox who could actually be good? <laughs> I mean, the Angels. Could have gone to the Phillies, you know. Yeah, could have gone to the Phillies. Uh, I mean, Harper was trying to get him there, I think, and he even wanted to go there. But then you got to sit there and go, hmm, well, he's already been with this team. This team's kind of committed to him. and they, they always try to put a good squad together. It's just the Angels haven't put anything together in a while here. It's kind of sad. Uh, now, baseball isn't one of those sports where you can just have – one guy and he's just going to take you to the promised land. I mean, right now we're kind of seeing the NFL with quarterbacks kind of turn into that and even the NBA is kind of like that because you watch uh, – well, I, I was just going to say, well, look at LeBron. He's always <laughs> – and then he's not even in the playoffs, you know. Uh, I had a weird dream about that, though. It was interesting. Uh, last night I dreamt that the Lakers made the playoffs and LeBron beat Golden State in the first round, and I'm like – yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you were on. Yeah. You're like, I don't know what you were on. <laughs> no, but um. Or, or not. It, it's really like, crazy that baseball is no, such a team sport <laughs> where you really mm-hmm. need everybody to be as good as physically possible because if if you have one position you stink at. Yeah. I mean, every team's uh, one Bill Buckner away from uh, losing Tom, a playoff I wish series. Being a disappointment <laughs> in his family. We will not. You know, you you miss that one play. Yeah. Because you don't have a good fielder at second and it's because well uh, well a great example is a team that oh usually a first baseman isn't your best fielder. Let's play with his mm-hmm. anus. But a lot of balls do come to first base way. You got to be able to handle it. You got to be good. You, you don't have to be the most athletic guys cuz yeah, Ryan Howard played first, you know. You don't got to yeah. be this right, fielding uh, legend, what? but I mean, what he did that ball dribbles right past and the scoring run comes in, you lose because of that. Oh yeah, I, I want you. It to really helps to make that, that defense. What are you referencing? Play. It's not that it, it what? actually doesn't pause. Wasn't there a game in the '80s where? Well, was Bill Buckner was from yeah, yeah Red Sox like Mets. Um, the ball really if you want uh, went to this stuff, right you to Bill Buckner. He put his glove down. and He just missed the ball, and the Mets scored because of it. I'm pretty sure that was the tying run that was scored, and then I think the next one scored. was the hit that lost them the game. Oh, mm-hmm. do you? And then they went to Game <laughs> Seven because oh, really? of it, and then they blew Game Seven. So everybody remembers Bill Buckner as being the guy who blew the series, but really it was a series of he blew the play, they blew the game later, and then they blew the series the next game. But it, it was so funny that. You know, this was the Mets, who are kind of historically not known for being the winningest team in New York. When you look at championships, the Mets have two, Yankees have 27, you know? And then, like, you had the Dodgers who were Brooklyn Dodgers until, what, 52? Because Giants and Dodgers used to be. And that's why it's interesting when you hear people talk about the New York football Giants. It's because way back in the day, there was the New York Giants baseball and New York Giants football. Mm -hmm. So you were either talking about the New York football Giants or the New York baseball Giants. But now they're the San Francisco Giants and the L.A. Dodgers. And you got that. (laughs) Well, I mean, thankfully, uh, Philly has only one team. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It's so funny. I'm just trying to tie that back in, how Mike Trout, he is the best player in baseball, 
but you need a team. Mm -hmm. And while the Angels are paying Trout and Pujols a combined, but I think Mike Trout's going to get what, like thirty-eight million a year, and Albert Pujols gets twenty-seven. You add those together, Mm -hmm. that's what sixty-five million a year. No, let's see. Yeah, it would be sixty-five million. I was right. Okay, Mm -hmm. so yeah, sixty-five million for just two players, and Albert Pujols is not the hitter he used to be. He's like a two hundred something hitter, like a low two hundreds hitter. Yeah, he doesn't, and he hits like twenty home runs. That's what he's been like averaging, uh, like a little less than that. So you're paying twenty seven for that, and Mike Trout, yeah, a credible hitter, hits for average, he gets on base, puts up some crazy stats. But when you look at his fielding stats. Mike Trout makes a few incredible plays here and there, don't get me wrong, but his defensive stats really isn't that much better than the average baseball player. Yeah. And it just goes to show how teams don't really value defense nearly on the same level that they value offense in baseball. But, you know, that's kind of – it's kind of unfair, I think, that you got these handful of guys who hit home runs who make these crazy contract money. You know, they make crazy contract money. And yeah. – you got guys like DJ LeMahieu, who's like the best defensive second baseman in baseball, and hit over 300 last year and put up some really crazy numbers himself. He just doesn't hit a lot of homers. Mm-hmm. Yankees got him for less than 12 million a year, and you've got a guy who, you know, Mike Trout's gonna get like 40 million a year. So you're telling me this incredible defending player who hits really good, he just doesn't hit for power is worth a fourth Mike Trout. So, but I mean, I'm happy cuz the Yankees were able to get them and I think the Yankees got a lot of quality players they added. So they went for really building the team up rather than mm-hmm. going for, you know, they didn't get Harper, they didn't get Machado, they didn't get that mega player, but honestly with the Yankees, I didn't feel like it was such an upgrade to do that one mega player, making the bullpen better, the starting mm-hmm. rotation better, adding depth and also adding, you know, really quality player, DJ LeMahieu and Adam Adovino. I, I mean, they did so much to just make their team better from an already great team. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you got teams just ch- chucking huge money at, like, a single guy. That's what the Yankees used to do. And mm-hmm. sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Well, look at the Phillies. When they paid Ryan Howard all that money, he got hurt, and he was never the same player. And then they were stuck paying a huge contract. And Angels are doing it with Pujols. And it, it kills a team. Teams stink when that happens because now all of that money you could have used to get three really good players as proven through, like, the DJ LeMay, who's around the league. You can get a whole, three of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, that just – it kind of boggles my mind that the Angels didn't try to trade Trout. And I know it's like, whoa, he's the best player in baseball. What could you have gotten for him? You know, that's a king's ransom. I mean, they could have said, hey, Phillies, uh, we'll take Aaron Nola, who's big-time pitching prospect there, top guy. We'll take him. We'll take a whole bunch of prospects. Yeah. We'll take you're going to pay money on this, that, and the other thing, and you're going to eat Albert Pujols' contract, too. Mm-hmm. Like, we're giving you Pujols and Trout. You're giving us a ton of players, and you're eating all that cap away from us. That's franchise-changing move right there. Mm-hmm. You're flipping – at that point, you'd have been flipping, like, $60 million. And instead, you're, you're keeping Trout. And, and I understand best player, but I, I don't see – the value in keeping him when you just keep putting out average teams. You're much better off completely folding and rebuilding and saying, we're going to suck for a little bit, but we'll be good in a couple of years because nobody ever just, I I don't know. I I think I've said everything I need to say about that. I just find it funny. I I don't know uh, when the angels are ever going to get their shit together. Now they could be good this year for all I know. Maybe everything just gels together. Yeah, who knows? Maybe Bryce Harper will get injured. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> no. He, if he pulls a Ryan Howard, where like he has like a serious injury and he's never the same again, then the the Phillies are stuck thirteen years paying that contract, and there's no 
There's no outs. There's like fully guaranteed. I, yeah. I figure if like he retires, he doesn't get paid. You know, I think it's funny. Maybe it would have actually been smarter to have not given him 13 years and gave him more like five or four. Well, the Dodgers offered him a four-year, 160, where they were going to pay him 40 million a year, which crazy andru- a- average annual. But he said, "I want to be somewhere for the long run." See, so. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know, but I, I don't know why you do that. I don't. I'm uh, not see like that. he said he wanted to go somewhere and he never wanted to think about having to move again. And for him, I mean, honestly, I mean, once you're sense. already making, when you're making dozens of millions of dollars a year, I'm not sure that you're too concerned about it. It's like, oh, well, I could make a couple more million playing here. And it's like, eh. Yeah. Sometimes the sanity of a situation, you know, knowing that that's what will make you happy. Sometimes, you know, it's worth going with that one. So yeah. that's why I, I think he didn't make the best – business decision but he made the best decision for him and sometimes that is the best business decision you know because he's the only one who knows that um oh Mm -hmm. that's me yeah over in uh hockey news uh the caps and lightning played a couple days ago and uh i feel like that's gonna be the eastern conference final this year it was last year it was Mm -hmm. a hell of a series last year and both teams really went at it tampa bay's got a hell of a squad this year um, the Caps have shown a lot of resilience, and that game went to overtime. They scored with 18 seconds left, forced overtime, and then the Lightning did take the game. But I think it's really interesting to show that, you know, the Capitals were able to really kind of go toe-in-toe with mm-hmm. the best team in the league and one of the most historically dominant teams. Like, and, Well, what I mean is Tampa Bay might finish with the most points ever this season, Yeah, uh, have the best season of all time. That typically bodes well for a team, a team that that's dom that's that dominant. Yeah, if you have a great win percentage, you're probably gonna have a great win percentage in the playoffs. And if you win more than you lose, you're gonna win. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know? So it would take like a momentum swing, but I think the Capitals are the team who could do it because uh, they have you know a great goalie and Holtby. You have a solid defense uh, and uh, really good scoring. I mean. Ovechkin's the best scorer of an era, so that always helps. And Backstrom's one of the best passers in the league. How about them Penguins? <laughs> yeah, what about them Penguins? <laughs> they're, they're, they're sticking around there. I, I really was hoping for a stretch there. It looked like they weren't going to make the playoffs, and then they went on a bit a little little bit of a win streak, and I'm like, no. Like anybody that, but the freaking Penguins, man. Uh, now, if you're a Penguins fan, I forgive you. Uh, <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, Don't uh, listen to him. It's the, just same really... thing with those Boston Red Sox fans. <laughs> he doesn't forgive you either. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Leave a comment in this my, comment my problem, section. <laughs> my problem with the Penguins is with other rivals, it's a little bit more of this kind of hard-fought, clean game. Or if it gets a little chippy, it's both teams go at it. Penguins are the biggest defenders of the – they'll come up and they'll hack you, they'll chop at you, and then you turn around and punch them, and then they're like, oh, look what they did to me. Look what he did. Sidney Crosby is the biggest baby in the history of the sport. He'll come up and slap at somebody, and as soon as, like, they get angry at him, he's, like, looking for a penalty, and they hit him, and then he's like, oh, where's the penalty? Come on, guy. Ref, ref, where's the penalty? He hit me. It's like, yeah, he hit you. You slashed him. And there's so many times he started shit with so many teams, especially Flyers fans know he started shit. There was one time he hit Wayne Simmons behind the net after a game had finished. He, like, um, he cross-checked Wayne Simmons across the back, and Wayne Simmons turned around and started fighting him, and the game was over. Like, they had blown the whistle. Like, this game was finished. And there was, like, a brawl on the ice. And (laughs) the players needed to be told, like, right away they were like, yeah, if a fight happens after the game's over, it's it's an it's like a federal not a federal offense, but it's a it would count as like an assault because at that point it's not part of the game; it's an assault charge. <laughs> so, which is interesting that hockey's kind of covered. Like you can get a fight with a guy, but if you do come up behind somebody and start a fight, and the other person's trying to skate away and they don't want it, one you will get a penalty. But one guy did get a lawsuit because he paralyzed a guy. He took him down from behind. Um, 
trying to remember. Well, it who that was. you see all the time. Like it's probably Matt Cook. <laughs> you, you see all who the used to be a penguin. Proof <laughs> that the penguins are full of goons. <laughs> but yeah, Cam. But uh, you see all the time how you know how the NFL has those shows in the week where they um, you can listen to what the players are saying. Well, that's the same thing with the 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 NHL. I've seen a couple videos online where they'll literally ask each other right before they fight, "You want to fight?" Like to make sure that it's a mutual. Oh yeah. So that they're not just brawling on somebody that's not aware. Of what Although they're... sometimes it is brawling on <laughs> somebody unaware. That's why. Yeah, a lot of times it is like, "Yo, let, let, let's fight. Uh, let, let's go out there. Let's do this." And sometimes it's. Uh, I think most of the time it's out of, like, a mutual respect thing. It's like, oh, I see you. You're a big dude. I see you fight people. I want to see how I stack up against you, you know? It's not, you know, you've been sleeping with my wife. I'm going to break you, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, and I don't, want, I don't want to get too misconstrued. I don't think – I'm not one of those people who say Sidney Crosby's a terrible player. No. He's he's got a hell of a lot of talent. I just think it's interesting that a lot of times you see a lot of people go, "Oh, Sid's one of the top ten players mm -hmm. all time in the NHL. He's probably top five. And I'm like, "What the hell are you talking about? You talk about Sidney Crosby, how he's a top five, top ten player, and then nobody talks about Alexander Ovechkin. And Alexander Ovechkin's probably gonna finish second all time yeah. in goals. And, and it's Sidney Crosby's not gonna finish anywhere near the top in any stat. <laughs> you know." How how can you – well, he, he he puts up over a point a game. He's a centerman. Of course he's going to put up more points than a wing. Well, and then a wing that proves that a centerman's more important than the wing then. No. Like, Crosby's never been a dominant goal scorer. Yes, he's been like a top 20 goal scorer. Mm -hmm. And, yes, that's really freaking good. And I got to give credit. He's one of the best passers in the game. He's an all-around player who plays the whole ice. Yes, he does a whole lot of stuff. But – People act like he's a whole hell of a lot better than anybody else on the ice. And honestly, I'd take Connor McDavid over Sidney Crosby anytime. Connor McDavid's got better speed. He's got a better shot. I think he's a better skilled player. And he's younger. He doesn't have concussion problems. Like, there is no reason you wouldn't pick Connor McDavid over Sidney Crosby. Meanwhile, you Meanwhile. know, if we're talking about getting a pure shooter, you're probably talking about Alexander Ovechkin because he's the best shot in the game. He always is the top goal scorer in the league. That is crazy that he always dominates the league. So, in the most important stat, too, like, I don't want to take away from people who get a lot of assists. Like, Nick Backstrom's an assist king, and he's great at doing it. He's great at passing and setting things up. But if we're talking about the most important thing in the game is to score. Yep. How is the greatest scorer in the league not talked about? I mean, yes, obviously, Ovechkin's talked about a lot. But everybody always said, Sid, Sid, Sid. It's always Sidney Crosby. It's Sidney Crosby. The face of the league is Sid. We've picked Sid. That's what it is. They've decided Sidney Crosby will be the face of the league, and that's who everybody mm -hmm. should like. And, yes, because he's kind of this Canadian golden child who was supposed to be the next great one. And then Ovechkin's this ugly Russian dude, you know. So I understand how, you know, a lot of people – who are especially Canadian are going to be more inclined to talk about their guy. Mm -hmm. But come on, Alexander Ovechkin has been more dominant than Sidney Crosby. And I don't think that's out of line. I think some of the sports people kind of are overvaluing things based off of what position he plays. And I don't think it's fair to say you don't, you can't compare Ovechkin – to mm -hmm. other centermen, you have to compare position to position. And when you look at wingers, best in the league every year, Ovechkin's top five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And he's always top in scoring. If he leads the league in scoring almost every year, he's the best player. That's just how it is. He's so dominant at the thing that matters most. Just mm -hmm. like – if you got a quarterback, you want the guy who throws the most touchdowns. You don't care about anything else. Absolutely. You like put up the numbers. That'll help us win. So, ugh. moving on to basketball. How about them Sixers? Huh? How about them Sixers? Um, I actually wrote that down. I'm like Sixers? Question mark. Uh, do you think they're in it? You think they got a shot? They're in it. 
but they're going to have to go against Milwaukee. The f the, the thing is uh, that I just well, the Sixers have lost like three games this year to the Celtics, right? I think they lost three games and won one. So they really they I did the, the game the other night against the Celtics was really good and um but can they can they beat these teams? Can they beat them in a series? That's the question. Yeah, it's interesting looking right now how yes, they're the three seed. And they their first who's the sixth seed right now? Uh Pistons who are barely over five hundred. Okay, so they'll probably win that round. Uh yeah, I mean honestly they probably will be the three seed, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Celtics are the five. I mean, I think the Celtics have the best roster in the East. It's just that they'll play one of the best. they'll play the Golden State Warriors and beat them, and then the next night they'll well, they, play they the Cavaliers and lose. Who's the four seed right now? Uh, the four seeds, the Pacers. Okay, so then the Celtics and the Pacers would be against each other in the first round. That would be interesting to see. Although the Pacers are kind of on a downward trend, and the Celtics are kind of on an upward trend. So, yeah. Sixers have been good in the last ten. Mm -hmm. um, the Bucks, funny enough, are five and five in their last ten, so they haven't really been too, too great. Mm -hmm. um, and then looking over at the West – we all know it's Golden State in the finals for the West. I mean, I know it looks close right now, and yes, it is close. But when you have five All-Stars as your starting five, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to pick any team over Golden State, you know? Yeah. Until the season's over, that's my pick to win the West, you know, until they can't. And, yeah, and then the Lakers, look at that. You know who we were talking, are they going to make it, are they not? They're 1-9 in their last 10. Well, they're not going to make it, obviously. Yeah, well, yeah, they're they're 31-40 and 40 now. They're, you know, it was interesting. They're I, 12, yeah, they're, they're, they can't make it I, now. I, I saw something this week that was kind of interesting, and maybe it's it – it, I think it's a great discussion point, but here's something to, to consider. What if the Lakers traded LeBron, just got rid of him? Opened up cap space. I mean, I, I know that's probably not going to happen, but that would wouldn't that be wild? They they just let him go. He's back out in the market. I mean, or maybe he demands a trade. You know. Well, that's the interesting thing. I mean, this was supposed to be well, Lakers basketball is back this year, and they stunk. But even Magic Johnson said that they needed one more piece in the beginning of the oh, year. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Lakers were a terrible team like they've been bad <laughs> for years like since kobe retired the lakers have not been relevant since kobe retired and they thought well we'll get our all-star and we'll be back and lebron's been hurt on and off during the season and that roster cannot go up against other teams when it's them and even with lebron they were splitting their games so I don't know. I, I don't know that you trade a guy after one year, especially when I know they probably won't. But that's when just, he chose to go there, it's like he probably has a no trade clause too. I have to believe he's got that. But hey, you never know. I mean, I uh, the the West is just so incredibly stacked. I mean, look at look at the look at the standings from first to eighth in the in the in the West. I think all of them are above five hundred. They're well above all of them. So there's a lot of quality in the West, but you know, until somebody can prove they can I beat think, Golden State. I think one of the the more interesting things that I, I kind of look forward to this year when it comes to the NBA is um, the fact that you're actually going to see the playoffs for the first time in maybe about 15 years where LeBron James isn't even in it. Isn't that yeah. wild? Like, that's wild. What's Well, what's really wild <laughs> is I've heard other people say this is the first time we've had the playoffs in that many years because, uh, well, in like at least five because how the last four have been Golden State, Cleveland. So when you have four years in a row where you know where the championship is, no LeBron's in it. Golden State isn't that far above the other teams, and Milwaukee has more wins than Golden State does. Now, some people would say, well, they're playing Eastern teams. Nobody thought the Bucs were going to be this good this year. 
No, like LeBron should have gone to the Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I I had somebody who um they they're a Bucks fan and they were telling me they go, you know, if we'd have gotten LeBron, we'd we'd have seventy wins this year. <laughs> you know, like probably right. Honestly, it's like why did he go to the Lakers? And then you sit there and think about it. It's like, yeah, why the hell did he go to the Lakers? They saw, <laughs> you know, like they're not gonna make the playoffs with the best player in the league or. Supposedly the best player in the league is LeBron even number one anymore. I think that's an interesting discussion. Do you still think LeBron's the most dominant player in the league? Right now? I mean probably not. He's not playing that way. But truthfully, and this kind of goes back to the discussion we had last week as to like who is the best, like who's the greatest of all time. I think it all revolves around what team you play on. You know? LeBron could have gone back to Miami, and honestly, uh, they they're in, they the would have been there in the playoffs. They, they could have yeah. actually, I mean, he could have made another run at it. Well, um, here's the interesting thing: when you look at his stats, they're not really too far down from where they have been. Honestly, they're right about where they they normally are. Although he's only played 51 games this year, mm-hmm. but it's just crazy that he's actually been. Do- doing pretty good over the last so many games here putting over 30 points a lot and even shooting pretty good yeah but when you have a losing team that just kind of stinks you know sometimes it's not enough for just you to go all out and that cleveland team was pretty good i mean when you're sitting there going Kyrie, lebron uh who else did they have not uh, not last year but uh, well, they had um, at different points. Who was the one guy they got from the Timberwolves? Kevin Garnett. Yeah. No, uh, I don't know why I thought that. Good shoot and uh, yeah, I I can't. I'm why am I blanking on his name right now? Well, I think it's better to just skip. <laughs> I'll just move but forward. no, just one last thing though about like the playoffs and everything this year. I. I'll tell you. I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't be surprised this year that the Warriors don't make the finals. Wow! Only because like I, I, I don't. I think there's a breakdown there, especially between like Kevin. Ke- there, there's been that speculation that Kevin Durant's going to end up in the with the Lakers. Now, does that does that cause a distraction? You know, I mean, I. And that's just a that's just a bold prediction. And that would be so great for the league too, honestly. Have a completely different team. Yeah. I mean, think about like having the Bucks and like um the Nuggets or the Rockets. I mean, that'd be such an interesting series cuz it's two teams you haven't seen against each other. The last time LeBron didn't play past the 82nd game of the season was in 2004-5, his second year in the league. So that's what, like 14 years ago? 14 years ago. Yeah. 14 <clears throat> straight years of him being in the playoffs at some point. And they said the odds were uh, 84% chance of the Lakers being in the playoffs at the beginning of the season. Oh, well. That, and, that just goes to show you you can't predict anything. Yeah. And you just don't know. Yeah, but well. as far as the East goes – well the, the well the wizards were supposed to be good this year and the, <laughs> they, they uh, every time they pick the wizards to make the playoffs they don't make it and every year they think they're going to stink they make the play <laughs> the, the wizards always find a way but it's funny that yeah this same season the wizards had a better chance to make the playoffs but mm-hmm. but john wall's been hurt and yeah uh, the the problem with John Wall is they're paying him so much money and then the rest of the team staying <laughs> and then he's hurt and it's like well that's the problem with basketball it is kind of a sport where you can kind of have a guy kind of put the team on his back go for a few 30 40 point games flip a but couple you know game stretch around see i'll tell you what though i just want to pick a pick on a team here for a second the sixers okay Look at that team right now. They've got three star players, Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, and uh, Jimmy Butler. That's kind of like how the Miami Heat were 
with Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron and James. Yeah. And that's that's what not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. But but that's what you need in a team though. You need really like three decent stars on your team to actually go anywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, does the Milwaukee Bucks have three decent players on their team? I mean, I know Golden State has at least four <laughs> or four or five, but the only thing with having big star power like that on a team is that can you get your ego out of the way and actually run and make it make a run at a championship? Yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the Bucks roster right now, and I'm like, okay, they got Pal Gasol, but I'm like. He's on the older side of things. I'm like, I'm looking through this roster, and I'm like, I don't really know anybody on Milwaukee's team. How are they so good this year? It's well, like the year of. Sometimes that happens. It made me think of the Seattle Seahawks of, like, what, 2013? Like nobody saw them coming, and then all of a sudden, boom, they were there, and they were going to win the Super Bowl. And they wrecked the Broncos in yeah. that one, man. I remember that. I, I remember before that game, I was coming. I'm like, I think the Seahawks will find a way to do it. I'm like, eh, I believe in the defense. And then the first play was a safety, and I'm like, here we go. <laughs> and the whole night, Peyton Manning's like, what the hell's going on, guys? We, we, we were the top offense all time. And I was like, defense wins championship. <laughs> oh, oh, we forgot Peyton Manning's playoff record. It's not good. <laughs> and then <laughs> pick, pick, pick. Uh, yeah. If you, it, it's interesting though. I, the last thing about this: when you look at Peyton Manning's stats in the Super Bowl in four career games, he threw like eight interceptions, fumbled four times, and only threw like three or four touchdowns. It's just his two wins were against the two worst performances in Super Bowl history: Rex Grossman and Cam Newton, who were both atrocious, like historically the two worst ever. And then the next two are Peyton Manning games against those guys to win. And well, yeah. no, well, and then Peyton Manning's loss is like a lot of Peyton Manning Super Bowls. The stats are not good, and a lot mm-hmm. of his playoffs, like his playoff stats, are pretty bad. But his regular season numbers are off the charts. So uh, sometimes a guy's got it in the playoffs. Sometimes he doesn't, and that's why it's always interesting when. I was shocked when the Eagles let Nick Foles go for Carson Wentz because you never know how a guy's going to handle the playoffs. And you know Nick Foles can handle it. He's a Super Bowl MVP for Pete's sake. And he took the Eagles to the playoffs this year when they had no business being there. Yeah. So, yeah. But, so how about that NASCAR? <laughs> Where we were at? We were at Fontana this weekend. Kyle Busch won his 200th National Series race. Yeah. And you want to know something interesting that I just – that I've noticed with the sport, their ratings have been up recently. Yeah. Their ratings, uh, television ratings, I should say. They were up like 4%, 3 or 4% the past couple weeks. Oh, wow. Well. That's a good thing for the sport. But, no, well, yeah. Um, they are getting rid of, uh, I think they're either looking to or possibly um, scrapping their qualifying system that they have. So when – their current qualifying system, they eliminate like the drivers into sections, so everybody's on the track at one at like for a certain amount of time. And like the slowest fifteen cars, they are ranked by between like forty third and twenty eighth or something like that. Yeah. And they're like ranked, and then twenty seven cars go back out on the track, and then they're ranked from like twenty seventh to. Um. 27th to 13th, I think, thir- 12 or 13. And mm-hmm. then the last 12, like, are set on the clock for, like, I think it's, like, fi- three three sets of 15 minutes. And in that 15-minute time frame, you, you're, you like, you are ranked by the quickest lap you put on on the, on the track. So when I, th- I believe everybody, what happened was they – the cars when they went out for the 15 minute the last 15 minute run the last 12 cars they all sat at the end of pit road for like 12 or 13 minutes and waited too long and they missed the time frame to um to qualify so you have to take an entire lap to get ranked well they they waited too long like they literally sat at the end of end of pit road for like 14 minutes and where they were at it takes a minute 
like the lap times are like 58, 59 seconds around the track. But like when you get off pit lane, you have to like your car needs to go up to speed and you have to take an initial first lap and then go back around and get the one full lap. Well, they didn't make it in time. And so um, I guess NASCAR got upset with that and they're looking to go back to racing or qualifying individually. Mm-hmm. Like individual race cars on the track, which actually I think is a great move. I think that's that's such a good move because I think that's going to attract more of your old fashioned NASCAR fans. Mm-hmm. The more they the more they bring back to the sport that was of fifteen twenty years ago, I think the more it's going to help the sport. Really, truthfully, yeah. I'm not saying like sc- scrap everything that they've done, but s- bring back some of the older stuff. Um. Obviously, probably not racing. Well, especially something with like qualifying, where who watches qualifying? Your Nobody, diehard fans. Your diehards. There, there was a time though, years ago, where you'd have like people come up on a Friday, like like a Friday. You'd have people camp, camp at racetracks. Yeah, and then they do and they would just qualifying, and they do all the races, races all weekend, and then they'd go home at the end. Yeah. But so you'd have people actually at qualifying watching the qualifying. Um, now, not so much. I don't know. I think the sport is is trying too hard to make it exciting, and I think when they were, when they were at their best, they weren't trying. If that makes any sense, they were just yeah. putting a stock car on the racetrack. The fastest the fastest race car got the pole. The fastest race car won the race. The best race car won the championship. There wasn't any elimination formats or anything like that, and I think that was that was when you're chase. That was when your fan base was at well, its best. And yeah, I mean, honestly. Oh, you want to know something else? That I just really just want to jump in here so that I found out this week. STP is leaving the sport after 48 years. Oh, wow. Well. I think, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I believe I saw that. Or mm. lo- or they're, they're jumping out of sponsorship. I think it's with Richard Petty Motorsports, which is a huge deal. Yeah. It's a huge deal. Well, Lowe's. <sighs> Lowe's yeah. leaving. Whew. That's a that's a lot of big sponsorship. Come on, Dale. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really uh, it's just interesting where a lot of people would argue it's like, why do we need the chase? Like, shouldn't it just be the cars race all year yeah. and the best car all season should win? But then the flip side is, you know, there is that playoff element where it is cool when you're like, whoa, whoever wins this last race basically he's going to win the championship see well who's left see i don't even like that truthfully well because then it's like what if this guy well yeah look you could win you could win 35 races and you don't win the last one (laughs) sorry like well see that that's the thing is i i kind of liked the old like i I actually like the chase format that they previously had before they eliminated people where like you yeah. had a set amount so of dra- you weren't out and you weren't out, but you had to make a cut line. You had to make a cut to be in it, which I was okay with. Like, but you wouldn't be eliminated. You'd just be eliminated by just not having enough points to be in it at all. Yeah, having like what I think is what I think would be really great personally for the sport is if you had what you had. You'd have to win to get in, win to get in, or race in on points. And then you would just race – the last 10 races would just be a point race system, not the elimination stuff. Although I, I, I don't know how I feel because sometimes watching those races at the end when it's like, okay, this guy's got to pick up three positions here. He's done for the season. You do see a, like, a lot of effort. And yeah. Sometimes you see one of those crazy maneuvers and it makes that race that much better. So sometimes it's like uh, – that little fire under the guy's ass. It's like, you, you got to go. Your season's over. It is cool to see in those playoff races how there is big pushes, and it mm-hmm. and it does put an, a little bit more of an entertainment aspect yeah. to it toward the end. But the flip side is, you know, you know, a guy could be – guy could be seven. Uh, uh, Mark Martin It's a great example. <laughs> guy doesn't win a lot of races. Always finishes top five, top ten. Mark Martin was the most consistent driver ever. <laughs> and funny enough, never won a NASCAR championship, finished second multiple times. He, but he won the International Race of Champions, the IROC series. They yeah. did twice, 
which was all the best racers in the world, but they all got the same car. And it was proof that, man, Mark Martin, when he was driving the same thing as everybody else, he was better than anybody else. on but I think I like that kind of racing the best. Like when everybody's dealt the same hand. Yeah. And so whenever anybody – one of the things is when everybody talks about NASCAR, a lot of people think it's just – racing in circles which yeah. it is it is a lot of it is <clears throat> but, but there's the adjustments so. but there's a certain type of driving skill i look at a person who i think was really good at just would race you hard and will just beat you by just his skill of knowing how to drive a car and and maneuver and whatnot is tony stewart yeah as much as people didn't like him in the sport or some people, I should say, didn't like him. He knew a car very well and yeah. could beat you by just knowledge of how to use his car, how to draft, how to mm -hmm. get in the corner correctly, corner entry, exit entry. Yeah, all this is just racing definitions. But um, but that's that's a person I look to as like a driver that really knew how to race a car very well. Um Jimmy Johnson. I yeah. mean, as much as, like, just, there would be races where I'd watch him, and in the beginning of the race, like, even a quarter to halfway through the race, their car was not set up properly. And you could tell. And there would be, it's, it would be like at Dover, where he's won so many races. But halfway through the race, man, just a couple adjustments, man, and he went from, like, 15th to winning the race. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, it's not just, and that's, that's what I, as a, as a fan, whenever, whenever, whenever anybody makes the comment of um, it's not a sport, I understand the argument, but a lot of people don't know, th like, the teamwork involved in it. Like, the pit crew, mm -hmm. the um, putting the car together at the race shop. Yeah, the spotter. The spotter the sponsorships like there's a lot that goes into it that people never recognize yeah you wreck a race car it's a lot of money you lose i mean there's the business end of it you know so i do think it is a sport that's an argument that everybody keeps saying that and probably somebody listening to this podcast is going to disagree with me but hey <laughs> you know hey uh, everyone's r has their right to their own opinion but i that's just my little spiel but yeah uh, you know well uh, the NFL. What's going on with the NFL? Not a whole NFL. lot. Odell Beckham. I mean, <laughs> there were some big moves. I know we talked about a lot of them last, last week. week. I know the big thing now is kind of leading up to the draft, but we, we've got several weeks till that. I mean, I know some people kind of talked a bit about, uh, you know, who's going number one. There's rumors that the Cardinals are going to trade – Josh Rosen, the guy they took 10th overall last year for a third-round pick just to get something back for him, and then they're going to get Kyler Murray. And there's other people who are like, no, you got Josh Rosen last year. He was supposed to be the future of your franchise. Why don't you draft you know, Nick Bosa, get yourself an incredible pass rusher, and then keep trying to build this team. But apparently the coach really likes the Kyler Murray guy, and – you know what's interesting about call like the transition from college football to the NFL is just how much like stock people put into it and how you look at these like like Josh Rosen. He's still young and, yeah. and he, he, his career can take off and he just might, might not be in the right spot. But just a year to 2 years ago everybody was looking and pointing at this guy as being like one of the best football players coming up. Yeah. And you just you just see like how things change. I mean, the NFL's so different right now because I remember a time when, for the most part, I knew every starting team, starting quarterback, and like around the league, year in year out, a lot of teams kept the same guys. Like I knew the Bengals were gonna have Carson Palmer, the Patriots were gonna have Tom Brady, Brady. the. The Colts had Peyton Manning, Donovan McNabb with the Eagles. 
Uh, heck, I mean, around this time, you would have had Michael Vick with the Falcons. You would have had Jeff Garcia down with the Buccaneers. Like, a lot of these guys who were around with teams for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And then now there's this trend where, up, oh, well, if they're not great after a couple of years, just throw them in the trash, trash can, get a new guy. Nobody wants to really build around people. They're like, well, this guy didn't work. Got to get the next one. It's like, no, don't do that because – you're never going to figure it out, and I think the Browns finally figured it out because they had had, like, 17 starting quarterback. No, what? it's an insane stat. Like, the Browns have had 33 different starting quarterbacks since Tom Brady's been the quarterback of the Patriots. It's like, what? They, they hadn't committed to anybody. They finally found their guy, but it's like, at what cost? I mean, you were the laughing stock of the league for, like, 20 years. 20 years. Uh, when, when are you going to learn that it's like, hey, man, we should commit to a guy? <laughs> it, it's just interesting that, yeah, in today's NFL, it's like, up, oh, you didn't work right away. See the door. The, it won the Cardinals, too. They fired their head coach after one season. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get rid of Josh Rosen after one season. It's like, up, oh, we gave you one chance. It didn't work. Bye. Y you know, uh, I, I, there's one thing that I th you see it. You kind of just – it's been happening. Uh, I think there was – so in the early 2000s, I think this happened, and then now it's happening again where I think you're seeing teams – or you're seeing teams picking a player. Um, okay, so the Browns picked um, Odell Beckham, and the quarterback is – He's lost my What, mind. Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield. So there is a good example right there. They took a guy out of college, mm -hmm. and they said, okay, you're our guy. We're, we're, I've made, we're making a decision. You're our guy, and we're going to start building around you, and we're going to make a goal. You saw that with Donovan McNabb. You mentioned they took him out of college their first two years with him. They didn't do well. But then they started building around him, and they, they, made, they made the playoffs. And started making and playoffs, <coughs> and then you you could just see it was growing, growing. And it's the same thing with like in some regard, it was some the same thing with Tom Brady because they took him, as a scrawny guy, not really anybody, and they just started building around him. And I think that's how it is anymore in the NFL. You're just gonna pick a quarterback, and you have to build a team around him. Yeah. The defense wins championships, but your offense is is like what gets you moving in the right direction. You know. You just – and hopefully, like, the one thing that I, I hope for Nick Foles is that Jacksonville actually builds a team around him. If they're smart, they will, but they really didn't do anything in free agency outside of getting Nick Foles. I understand they're like, well, we have Leonard Fournette. He's a great running back, and we got a really good defense. But if they don't get a receiver for Nick Foles, especially when, honestly, they could have given up what the Browns gave up for Odell Beckham. Mm -hmm. I mean – you telling me Jacksonville couldn't deal their – yeah, it's a it's a high-up first rounder, okay. But you probably would have just said, hey, here's a first. We want Odell and maybe, you know, that would have been the trade there. Yeah. You get Odell, that's a franchise-changing player. When you add Nick but Foles who can throw, Odell comes down with the ball – He's better than the guy you're going to get in the first round. He's a proven player in the league. And I've always found that if you have a chance to get a proven player in the league, you always take that over the gamble that is a first-round pick. Well, yeah. But I'm going to say with the Browns, they'll make the playoffs, or they should, or they'll be they close. Should. If, if they, they should. If they don't make the playoffs, this year's a bust if they don't but make playoffs. they need another two or three players to really – it all together i think yeah i don't think they're gonna contend for a championship i mean honestly i see the patriots in the super bowl again honestly the chiefs will contend um as long as mahomes looks like he did last year but how many times have we seen guys you know they had a really fall. good year and then the second season it's like up oh, they fall back down to earth well look no. at carson wentz well yeah he had that one great season and but they then, also built a team around him and yeah they and see, that's that's the thing. Well, and that's why they let Foles go. They're like, well, we built the team around Wentz, so we're gonna we're sticking with him. We can't go to Foles, but the that's um, tough. 
Deshaun Jackson coming to Philly. That's going to be interesting. Um, seeing him return. How many years has he been in the league now? Eight years? He's halfway through his – he's oh, got to be halfway Deshaun through. Deshaun Jackson. Oh, he had to have come in. Uh, Is this 10 years already? He's way past. Mid- Let me look. Yeah, it, it's got to be at least 10 years. Because like he's not a he's not a young player, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's just you're getting a player that's more. He's been in the league in a it's been in the league for quite some time. Okay, Deshaun Jackson, <clears throat> two thousand eight. So came, eleven years coming up this year. Wow. Yeah, he's made three Pro Bowls. All of them were with the Eagles. Then he went to the Redskins. People forget that he went to the Redskins, and then he went to the Buccaneers. Uh, he did better with the Buccaneers, but how many years was he with the Redskins? Uh, three years. What years was it? Twenty. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and then seventeen, eighteen with the Bucks, and then every year before that with the Eagles. Yeah. Crazy stat though. He averages a touchdown every. 10 catches just about which I guess that's not too outlandish honestly but he has 10,000 receiving yards on only 500 some catches that's so he averages almost 20 yards a catch but yeah it's Deshaun Jackson and then he has 4 return touchdowns with a whole bunch of return yards he was really good at that too mm-hmm. obviously the Giants game in 2010 <laughs> yeah I I remember I had his rookie card and I got it signed by him but he was kind of a dick <laughs> I just remember, like, I, I had the card. I put it on the table. He grabbed it, signed it, and he threw it at me. And I'm like, okay. He didn't smile. He didn't say hi. He didn't do anything. Just just looked at me like, take your card, kid, and get out of here. <laughs> but I remember he was he was a rookie, and it's when I got my thing signed. And then I remember the next year we went to the Eagles Carnival thing again. And – uh his autograph thing went from the $25 line to the $75 line because he ended up being, you know, really good. a really good player. So, yeah. Yep. I had heard some things where people were saying, oh, the Giants are giving up. They're just throwing their team away because they traded Odell and Vernon Well, they have away. to rebuild. Like, they like have they've a good- stunk the last couple of years. They just need to. They have a good player in Saquon Barkley. and Well, they, they need to do a need... quick rebuild because you don't want to wor- waste Barkley's, you know, you don't want to waste his prime on terrible teams. You don't want him to be like a Barry Sanders where he's carrying the team and you're handing it to him so much. It's like, guys, we got to give him a team. Well, the, when you say that, it makes me think of Drew Brees because Look Drew Brees. But Drew Brees was with uh, the San Diego for the – I every time I – I never really – every time I look at Drew Brees, I don't identify him as any work playing for another team, but he was yeah, played for San Diego. Yeah, he started with the Chargers. and he could he didn't – he was a great player, but he never, like, made it. Um, and I kind of think that's the way it is with Saquon, and, and I think that's the way it is with a lot of players in the NFL. You have, like, that one starting team you're with that either – you learn from and you don't do well with or you make it far enough but you may not win it but you always need that one team to kind of help you out get to the next the, the better team you know um interesting thing about drew Brees is <clears throat> i mean in all honesty he's one of the best quarterbacks of all time mm-hmm. and it's crazy to think that when he was with San Diego, you know, he it was him and he had LT back there and you yeah. had a crazy good squad. But they just but, never made the Super Bowl. Well, it was funny. The year after Drew Brees left and went to the Saints, that was the year LT set the record for rushing touchdowns in a season, put like he had 32 touchdowns in one year, which that's so insane to think about. But uh you know, they were fine afterward. I mean, as long as LT was in San Diego, they were good. And then when LT left and went to the Jets, 
You know, the Chargers really haven't been back until this past season. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, you know, that was a franchise-changing move when they said, eh, we're not going to bring Breeze back. He had a big injury. We don't think he'll recover. And then he was going to go to the Dolphins. The Dolphins were like, eh, we changed our mind. He's going to have injury problems. So the only team that was going to take Drew Brees was the cesspool that was New Orleans, (laughs) which that's not me dissing on New Orleans. The Saints at that point in time were the laughing stock of the NFL for years. I mean, the Saints had never been good before Drew Brees. Like, there was never a time where people were like, whoa, the Saints are coming. Nobody was afraid of the Saints. The Saints had always been the punching bag in the NFL. They'd been terrible their whole history. And then Drew Brees comes in and wins a freaking Super Bowl. I mean, that's that's a perfect story. And, well, and then... Manifel's full of them. You got Tom Brady, a guy who 198 guys got taken before Tom. You think any? You think that draft's redone? Um. Yeah, yeah. If we could go back to the 2000 NFL draft, you think anybody's not taking Tom Brady number one overall? You know, so yeah. I think that's uh pretty good for the episode. If, yeah. if if you're good, I'm good. Um. So, guys, yeah, if you like this episode, throw a like down there. Uh, Subscribe. Come back for more.